folks. Hello again. This is Let's Talk Ed. And Chris and I are talking about social media. Again, this is Chris's uh, forte. And uh, today, Chris, I really want us to hit on how to set up a, a team to succeed, right? And I understand there's always a budget uh, concern. There's always some red tape somewhere. But at the end of the day, somebody like myself needs to figure out how the folks dealing with uh, social media succeed because they're integral to the success of the college, the, whether it is bringing in new students or the retention, donors, the community information, everything we've been talking about. So now that I teed you off, teach me. <laughs> So, you know, I, I'm about to make social media, college, college higher ed social media people all across the country very excited and happy when they listen to me uh, because I'm going to give kind of my pie in the sky, uh, like in a perfect world, here's how it should be. So, you know, there's that that old phrase that, you know, you can tell somebody's priorities by where they put their money. And there are a lot of social media teams across the country in higher ed that are teams of one. And, uh, you know, they are, are being asked to do a whole lot with very little. And at the same time, they're being told how important social media is. We need to do so well on it and, and all of that. And, and the two things don't always balance out very well. So, you know, part of it is, you know, you do have to have that good team in place. So, you know, as social media first started rolling off, a lot of times this became your marketing staff that, that were managing your social media. And, you know, you're, you're trying to be strategic with it. So, you know, over time, what you start doing is you bring in some experts in social media. You know, again, if you think about this from a, a faculty perspective, just because you can teach history doesn't mean you can then turn around and teach chemistry, too. Uh, they, you know, yes, you're, you're teaching. It, it should be the same thing, right? But it's not. Uh, you know, most people would say that's absolutely insane. Yet, you know, in, in many cases, you have people that, you know, they have one set of skills and they just there's an assumption that they're also going to be an expert in social media. And it's, it's wait, not wait. All, Let, it's, let's clarify. So are you saying marketing as in a business course of studies that focuses on marketing isn't necessarily synonymous with social media? Is that there's. There's overlap there, but there's also some mutual exclusivity as well. So somebody from a background of communication would be closer or not necessarily? Potentially. I mean, so there are a lot of things that you can look at to start becoming an expert in social media. So, you know, you're really starting to try and understand how the algorithms work. You're starting to understand things like frequency, how often you should post, you start talking about strategy, you start looking at what other people, including your own competitors and, and others are doing in order to start developing that strategy. And, you know, a big part of it is developing a strategy. So coming up with a social media calendar of some sort that has a variety of different pillars in it of of content that you want to make sure that you are doing in support of the college. And, you know, so it's something that, that I use every day. So, you know, as we record this, here we are early November, and I have a social media calendar right now that is going into February uh, of things that, that I want to be prepared for. Uh, because, you know, in our personal social media, certainly we can just go on and I can post something willy nilly and it doesn't matter, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things. You know, I don't have to put a lot of thought into what I'm putting on if I want to show a picture of one of my cats. But 
if I am trying to do something for our college's social media, I have to think about, you know, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish with this? Why is this important? What are the things that I need to make this succeed? And those things don't just come out of thin air. They take planning. And, you know, you want somebody that knows and understands how social media works beyond I type some stuff here, put in a picture or video, and I hit this button to make it go. You want them to understand, you know, exactly what it is that they're doing. So the expectations that we on the administrative uh, end of the house are very high, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because, but, but at the end of the day, I realize that you can you cannot market yourself or advertise your your way out of the situation we're in. Yes, in the last, you know, this uh, last uh, fall twenty three term, almost all colleges have seen a resurgence in enrollment. Fantastic. But there's more than communication. There's more than social media. I understand that we need to do something about our classrooms, about our buildings, about our faculty and staff salaries and, and a welcoming environment. We need to do all of those things. But when it comes to social media, uh, you know, I, I'm at the fork in the road, Chris. Help me out. You know, I've got that much in my budget. It's going to be either a teacher or somebody in financial aid, for example, or somebody on social media. Why do you think I should make my investment in the person's social media? Sometimes at the expense of the other areas that are critical and crucial. So that, that's the real trick, obviously. So, you know, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. You can't just advertise out of a problem. Uh, and, and make it work where I would argue with a, a dedicated social media person is you now have somebody that has the opportunity to get messaging out to a large number of people. Uh, whereas, you know, an instructor and, and don't get me wrong, I, like in a perfect world, you would hire, you know, that instructor, you would also hire that financial aid person and you would hire that social media person. Um, the impact that they may have may be less than, uh, the impact, uh, as far as the number of people impacted by something, um, you know, certainly a faculty member could impact somebody's life in a way that a social media person is not. Same goes for that financial aid person. Uh, but, you know, as far as messaging for the university, getting somebody that is, you know, highly competent because they have a large set of skills, uh, they have an opportunity to really, you know, get your name out there even more and get people to be excited about your college or university. So, so what kind of expectations do you set? Is it bean counting? You know, you need to reach X number of people. Therefore, we need to get that many clicks. Therefore, we need to get that many conversions. I mean, uh, or is there, or do you advocate for a different uh, format? Again, help me out. I'm not right. asking for a friend. I'm asking for me. Yeah. So, I mean, part of it is really diving into what you want out of the analytics. Uh, early on, one of the things that people really talked about was, you know, how big your fan base is. And those are very old metrics to go by. Uh, some people still find a lot of value in that. Uh, engagement rate is something that uh, a lot of your social media managers are going to look at. That's the people that are, are seeing and interacting with your content in some way. And, and the thing that you have to remember is, your social media work is largely, when we're talking in the recruiting aspect, top of the funnel work. Um, there, you know, yes, ultimately the goal is butts and seats, right? Like that's that's what we want. But there are a lot of steps between somebody interacting with something on social media, seeing it, and then becoming a student. There are a lot of steps that fall between that. Now we want to make sure we are making that process as easy as they can, you know, as we can. Uh, so if we want somebody to register for a class, for example, if we have a direct link where they can register, that's great. Um, you know, because we'd also don't want to be like, you know, oh, we'll just go to the university website and hopefully you'll find what you're looking for. Uh, we but don't that want was that. the strategy we used to use 20 years ago. 
right? right? You want them to go to the landing page because you want them to visit the website and see it as a whole. Right. Uh, which if you're asking them to do a specific thing, like that's very hard to do. You know, it, it's sort of like, you know, well, I want you to go to the library versus I want you to go to the library and get this specific book and here's where it is. Um, so, you know, I, I much prefer if we are saying, you know, hey, here's information on this intercession class, for instance, uh, that we take you directly to a landing page for that and that alone that walks you through that particular process rather than dropping you off at the very top .edu website and then you have to find that, you know, in amongst a bunch of scrollers or find that, you know, in a menu somewhere or something like that because people aren't going to take the time to do that. So social media in this particular case is a conduit. Mm -hmm. But you talked early on uh, two episodes ago about the community building perspective, about creating a story and a narrative that attracts particular students in the demographics or as individuals. So please reconcile it for me. Or so, yeah, truly it's both. Um, so, you know, part of that is, as you're talking about, um, you know, again, let's say you're getting students to, really see your your college as somewhere exciting to be, part of the messaging on that can be a subtle call to action. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be right out of the gate, you know, hey, coming up on November 8th, we're going to have this great event, go click on that. But, you know, hey, student life is something that's really important here and we're going to do all this stuff and, hey, learn more about it by visiting this site. And that's the last thing that you do. So um, it isn't the the hard message, but it's part of the message. Well, folks, that has uh, been uh, the end of this uh, series on social media. Chris has uh, taken us on a deep dive, uh, helping me. Uh, on the administrative side of a college, understand uh, what social media can do for us, how we can use it effectively to augment all of our tools, and really shedding light in in a very kind and gentle way, not in your face way, like I've heard many people do it, uh, in, in terms of why it is important to invest in social media, why it is important to, yes, have high expectations, but set them up for success. Chris, thank you. It's been very enlightening for me. Thanks, Zahi. For Let's Talk Ed, this is uh, Chris Ford and Zahi Atala. Uh, like and share, hit that uh, bell here on uh, YouTube, but you can also find us wherever you find your podcasts. And we hope to see you here next time.